Okay, well, uh, uh, dear uh, investors, shareholders, analysts, uh, and of course, Maib colleagues, uh, thank you uh, once again for your interest in Maib, and uh, thank you for uh, joining our regular quarterly updates. Uh, we are pleased to present to you today uh, the financial results uh, for the fourth quarter and the full year of 2023. Uh, just to remind you that these results are based on uh, the consolidated unaudited financial statements for the Maib group. Uh, and uh, also to remind you that any forward-looking statements in the presentation today are based on our best estimates and are not intended to be taken as a promise of um, any future performance. Um, so um, on the call today, uh, we have uh, Georgi Shagidze, uh, the CEO of Maib, uh, Makar Stoyanov, uh, the CFO, and uh, Evgeny Arisovic, um, who um, is, represents investor relations. Um, so with that in mind, I will uh, pass the baton to Georgi to uh, uh, summarize uh, Maib's performance uh, during the quarter and the year. Yes, um, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining uh, joining the call. Let me start with the highlights, and then we will have the opportunity to speak uh, uh, in more detail uh, across the slides. The, in terms of the macro, I think the quarter three and quarter four uh, as well, uh, they are much more favorable than the first half of the year. Quarter three was 2.6% uh, and overall expectation for 2020, uh, three years uh, a year is uh, about 2% considering the negative uh, start um, of, the, of the year. In terms of inflation, <clears throat> In terms of inflation and base rate, I think they are already under the long-term target of 5%. So the December 4.2, January was slightly up 4.6%. The interest rates, and we will be speaking about the interest rates in the in the context of performance, the base rate uh, is already 4.25% uh, related to the inflation that we have. Uh, in terms of uh, our strategy, Strategy, we continued uh, uh, strengthening our position across all the products and lines, reaching about 591. Thousand customers. We targeted six hundred thousand. Just a little bit missed this, but we already uh, crossed this um, six hundred thousand. If we speak from today's uh, uh, point of view, uh, we do already have one point two million cards, and very importantly, sixty six percent of our deposits and. 56% of our loans are granted through uh, through mobile um, through mobile banking. Uh, in terms of uh, financial um, performance, the last year return on equity was about 17.2%. Uh, the uh, interest rate decrease uh, already bottomed uh, out uh, and. Um, seems that uh, in uh, December we little bit even increased uh, our uh, our uh, uh, NIM, which is clearly positive fa factor going uh, going forward. Um, Evgeny, maybe next slide. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, um, thank you, Georgi. Um, so uh, the presentation today will be structured as such. We will start with uh, macro highlights, country overview. Uh, Georgi will then tell us about uh, about the bank's performance and strategy. And then Makar will continue with the financial results. Afterwards, we will open uh, the floor for any questions you might have. You can write um, your question in a chart, in a chat, or um, you can um, raise your hand and uh, you can um, speak your question out. Uh, so uh, next is uh, the macro highlights. Uh, the economy, as Georgi mentioned, has shown signs of recovery. Uh, the latest announcement uh, from the Ministry of Economy in December uh, was uh, that uh, 
estimated growth in 2023 in real terms was 1.5%. Um, there was a strong recovery in the agricultural sectors. Some other sectors uh, like IT also displayed growth, but this was offset by uh, weak uh, consumption. Exports uh, have also experienced a 8% decline year on year. Uh, however, this uh, can be mostly attributed to uh, abnormally high volume of exports and re-exports um, last year. So, uh, so this impacted uh, the baseline comparison. In terms of the forecast going forward, uh, the key uh, forecasters, which are IMF, EBRD, Ministry of Economy, World Bank, and Vienna Institute for International Economic Studies, uh, predict uh, that the economy will have a strong rebound this year between 3.5 and 4.3 percent in real terms. Um, uh, next slide is uh, about the monetary policy uh, and inflation. Uh, we um, have uh, seen uh, a very strong cycle of monetary policy easing this year. Since uh, November 2022, when the base rate was at 21.5%, the NBM uh, has uh, taken seven uh, decisions to lower uh, base rate, uh, and it now uh, stands at 4.25, the decision which was taken in in February uh, 2024. Uh, this has uh, partly driven the economic recovery of the second half and uh, for the banking system and Maib uh, has led to an increase in lending, uh, particularly the retail lending. And uh, we saw some rebound in mortgage lending. Uh, this is the customers that uh, delayed buying homes when interest rates were high and now came back to the market. Um, also, the reserve requirements for deposits uh, were lowered, uh, and they're now 33% uh, for uh, local currency and 43% for foreign currency. Um, in terms of inflation, uh, there was a substantial drop, and uh, the latest reading was 4.6%, uh, which is uh, within NBM uh, target corridor. And NBM uh, just uh, two days ago uh, announced that they expect inflation for 2024 to be 4.7% on average, which is again within their target corridor. Uh, the slowdown in inflation is attributed to a combination of factors, including the very tight monetary policy, uh, which prevailed uh, most of the year and uh, also much lower energy prices than in 2022. Uh, now to the currency performance. Uh, uh, Moldovan currency, the lei has uh, had a very strong year against the uh, main reference currencies. It was up 9% against the USD and 6% against the Euro. Um, there was some reduced demand for foreign currency as the imports have fallen. Um, there was some uh, weakness in uh, consumption. Um, and also there were large flows of external financing, uh, external aid from uh, key international factors. Um, also the foreign currency reserves have uh, again reached uh, an, a historical maximum of 5.5 5.5 billion US dollars at the end of 2023. Um, in terms of uh, donor financing, uh, we estimate that it was about 880 uh, million US dollars during the year. Uh, and uh, it was the World Bank, the EU, the IMF who have contributed the most of this. Um, now, um, Going into the performance of the banking system, of course, again, here, the key impact was from very high interest rates in the beginning of the year. Um, so as a result, we saw a, a, a huge increase in deposits by almost 20% for the system. Um, Maib here uh, gained 0.5% uh, of market share. Uh, a lot of it is attributed to uh, our strong brand recognition and uh, trust that uh, customers assign to uh, Maib's um, to Maib Bank. Um, 
and in terms of uh, th this was also reflected in uh, the asset growth uh, once again maib here uh, gained uh, quite significantly uh, 1.2 uh, to reach 33.9 percent of the assets uh, of the banking systems in, in terms of loans um, here uh, we saw very high interest rates prevailing uh, throughout most of the year impacted lending, there was also some economic uncertainty. And as a result, uh, loans of the banking system were up modestly only 2.6%. Once again, Maib uh, was able to increase its market share uh, in this market. So um, uh, with, with this in mind, I will also um, touch upon the key events uh, that uh, um, the key events politically and economically. Uh, the key event uh, during the quarter was uh, the, uh, the the decision by the European Council to accept uh, to to admit Moldova to EU accession negotiation. This is a momentous decision for Moldova, which will impact the country for years to come. It uh, should also open uh, Moldova's access to EU accession funds, which are quite significant. Um, I have already touched upon uh, the inflation outlook and the economic recovery. Um, also, just to brief you on the political developments, uh, there were local elections taking place in November. And in October 2024, we expect to have the presidential elections in Moldova. Now I will uh, pass the microphone back to Georgi um, to speak about Maib and our accomplishments during the quarter and the year. Yeah, thanks, uh, Evgeny. This is uh, Maib, at, Maib at a glance uh, slide. I won't spend lots of time here just to perhaps highlight few points. Uh, number one is that we are by far the largest bank in the country across all the key metrics and the uh, and the products with uh, 1.1 million customers and you can see other operational numbers. Number two, our assets, <clears throat> asset base in euro is about 2.7 uh, billion uh, euro with the equity of uh, about 400 million euro uh, then uh, if you th if you and number 3 the shareholder uh, breakdown you can see on the uh, bottom right hand side of the chart 41% of the shares belong to Hain partner which is the consortium between among uh, EBRD Horizon Capital and uh, and uh, Invalda if we move on to the next page So this is uh, our uh, strategy or four pillars or focus, uh, focused areas of our strategy. Mm -hmm. We continue uh, transforming the bank in a way that we put the customer at the center of everything uh, we do and uh, focusing on customer experience where we, based on the third party researches, have the best place uh, in, uh, in the banking and we are also comparing ourselves with the other retail industries not only not only the other banks uh, in the country the second one is the digitalization and many initiatives in digital and uh, we have a slide and I'll be discussing more in this uh, context uh, third one is payments and uh, in payments there are so many new features that we launched but then we continue uh, here providing the best class uh, uh, service. And then the last one is the branch uh, offloading or branch uh, transformation, which we continue uh, with uh, where we closed down 30% of the branches when we increase the number of customers by 30%. So despite 30% growth, we closed down the 30% of branches. We re uh, changed uh, the model of uh, all the branches. We rebranded uh, about 90, 95% of the branches and the experience, the branch banking experience is totally refreshed uh, uh, in the country. Next slide. <clears throat> So these are the two main uh, uh, updates uh, the uh, in operating uh, performance. One is that last year, 
uh, by the end of last year, we adopted our sustainability strategy and approved the roadmap. And uh, Evgeny is leading our uh, effort uh, here. I think the big news, uh, we developed it with the uh, help of our uh, partner, international financial institutions. Um, and we do have already allocated 10 million uh, for the green fund or internal green fund that we will be using uh, during the year. The second point is that we continue issuing the corporate bonds on the local market. And uh, we already issued about uh, 250 million uh, with uh, 740 local investors. And we thank everyone helping us uh, in this endeavor and we continue uh, continue this uh, issuance uh, during the year next slide so these are our numbers uh, in uh, in payments and digital you can see on the um, top left hand side uh, there is a growth of our re um, uh, retail mobile banking users uh, 58 percent uh, uh, quarter over quarter and then the growth is uh, uh, with this pace for a uh, few quarter uh, already. The other area we are quite proud of is the number of loans and uh, deposits that we grant through our mobile banking. You can see on the top, uh, top right hand side that 56% of our loans and 66% of our deposits are granted through our uh, our mobile banking. Uh, next one. Uh, we added many features in our uh, my bank. Um, and if we speak about the retail banking, uh, so we already have the um, uh, automatic KYC, which basically you can start and complete. Uh, only through mobile banking, uh, we did uh, uh, do have the online uh, onboarding of the new customers. Uh, we launched uh, buy now, pay later uh, function, which is uh, already embedded, and then uh, we are seeing uh, quite a progress on the uh, on the on the function. Uh, this year we could we will uh, sorry this quarter we target to uh, redesign our our um, our uh, utility payment uh, section and wallet section of the of the app and somewhere around uh, the end of the first uh, half of the year our target is to launch the first version of the super app which will be totally new uh, new experience. Uh, finally, we did have a new homepage design, which uh, we've developed with um, uh, with the third party uh, user experience focus providers, and uh, we are enjoying now with more nice, intuitive, transparent, and uh, and easy to use uh, easy to use uh, menu and uh, pages in the in the mobile banking. Uh, if we move on, uh, these are the performance uh, numbers. Um, Makar will continue in more detail. Um, our profit uh, last year grew by around 10% um, and reaching about 1.25%. Uh, billion uh, lay our return on equity is was 17.2 uh, percent because of uh, low dividend distribution uh, related to the uh, to the regional context and uh, uh, and the approvals of the dividend but then again you can see that the profit was uh, was 10 percent uh, higher we are especially proud that this happened uh, despite the decreasing interest rate uh, environment of rapid rapidly decreasing interest rate environment when uh, our November, December uh, NIM already even slightly recovered due to our uh, effort to diversify our portfolio and continue the growth. <coughs> the cost to income as a result of what I said uh, did uh, uh, increase the liquidity and capital adequacies are standing at uh, very uh, high numbers. Makar, please. Thank you. So let me maybe deep dive on the financial performance and the drivers behind. 
So if you look on the loans and deposits, uh, we see that uh, both of them has increased. On the loan side, year on year is over 4%, 4.4%. Uh, quarter on quarter is a kind of the same as around 0.2% increase. The main driver behind of the increase is the volume of the retail loans, which was just mentioned before uh, we saw some recovery. Uh, the recovery on the uh, legal entity side, we see lower and uh, stabilizing in Q4. For instance, in Q4, we saw a semi-loan book slight contraction to 0.9%. Again, it's kind of seasonal uh, business, while on corporate uh, portfolio side is stable quarter on quarter. Uh, of course, uh, it's also linked to the evolution of the economic activity, which was just mentioned uh, at the beginning of the presentation. On the retail side, uh, we saw a recovery and we uh, see the increase also proportionally the, the retail side from 35% of the portfolio to 36. Uh, on the deposit side, a strong increase uh, by 9% quarter on quarter over 24% on yearly basis. Here we see strong performance across all uh, business lines, uh, both retail, but also legal entities, uh, corporate SME business. Now, if you go on the next slide, uh, as just was mentioned, uh, we saw uh, some decrease on the net profits to, uh, to um, on quarterly basis, 262 million uh, lay, minus 20% versus quarter before, uh, and minus 7.1% uh, year, year, on year before. Uh, now, it's driven uh, mainly by decreasing the NIM. Despite the challenges, we still managed to keep, uh, let's say, pre-provision uh, ROE around 21.1%. Uh, given the challenges uh, or given that Q4 we start entering into the winter, we again uh, build up some provisions to ensure that we are uh, stable and secure. And you see ROE around 13.6% uh, after the provisions on net income. And ROI, uh, return assets, a similar uh, picture is around 2.1% ROI, three provisions, 3.2, uh, slight decrease uh, a bit uh, from a quarter earlier. Now, if you go to the next slide, um, we faced in 2023 rapidly decreasing level of the interest rate, and of course, it impacted uh, net interest margins. But we, as a bank, have managed uh, to man uh, to optimize it, uh, and what you see, net interest margins went down from 6.6 percent .6 in Q4 2022 to 4.2 in Q3 of the last year. And we have seen already starting stabilizing and bottoming down in Q3, Q4, beginning of Q4, and also starting stabilizing around 4.5% in Q4 2023. If you look on the drivers behind, now you see cost of funding uh, went down rapidly from 4.1 to 3.1% in 20 in just one quarter. The reason being that we had an important repricing happening in the last months of the last year. On the yield side, yes, we had an increase in the yields on securities from 10.2 to around 7%. But if you look on the yields on the loans or of the main kind of the driver of performance, it's more or less stable around 10.5, uh, 10.6%. So it highlights that from the point of view of the um, credits, deposits, uh, and the yields behind, we have a strong uh, performing business, uh, which allowed us, uh, despite decreasing the level of interest rate, to keep the net interest margins uh, stable and healthy around 4.2 in Q3, and even increasing, uh, despite again continuous decreasing of interest rate, increasing to 4.5 in Q4 2023. Uh, as a result, what you see here, the net interest income uh, overall year on year decreased by around 18.6%, but on quarterly basis, it's increased by 14%. And that shows the strength and the healthiness of the business from the from diversification point of view and from the kind of volume point of view, the yields point of view. If you go on the next slide. Now, if you go on the non-interest income, here important to highlight that uh, increasing uh, increasing uh, the interest rate, uh, increasing uh, revenues, non-interest income. Uh, year on year by around 13% on the quarterly basis, quite stable, around plus 03. The driver behind is a strong performance of the Forex, at both as a volumes and the kind of the diversification. Uh, if you look on the uh, other net fees and commissions, we had some decrease, 
The drivers behind it was in Q4, usually we pay to our, some fees to our other banks, corresponding banking, for instance. And because of the increase of the volume of the payments for the cards, we have some increase in the, in the fees and commissions paid. Uh, but overall, uh, it's uh, kind of the, uh, year on year, you see it's around the same level of performance or the same level of in income from net fees and commissions. Now, on the next slide, of course, uh, any business requires kind of maintaining uh, the OPEX people and so on. And what you see here, uh, I'm going to highlight that the on the yearly basics, our operating expense increased uh, by around 7%, 6.8 to be more specific. Uh, again, despite the fact that uh, the uh, we, end, we start the year with the inflation rate around 30%, we ended uh, lower, but we had a huge pressure on the, uh, the cost side, and we managed to keep it uh, manageable, let's say, on the level of 6-7% increase year on year. If you look on the uh, kind of drivers behind uh, for the quarter, on the quarterly basis, which increased by around 16%, uh, the main driver is that we uh, reactivated our some marketing campaign, legal expenses at the end of the year. Uh, and of course, we had to, uh, we continued uh, investing in our kind of repair of our assets, be it tangible, be it intangibles. As a result, the cost to income ratio is around 51.4% on quarterly basis, around 3.2 percentage points uh, increasing uh, on the quarterly basis. Cost per assets around 0.8% uh, as a quarter before. Uh, if you talk about the quality of portfolio, uh, the MPL ratio is around 2.7%. MPL on the under FIRS is decreasing by 0.4% uh, on the quarterly basics and around the same or increase, decreasing uh, by 0.1 percentage point on year on year. Uh, it's uh, driven by uh, strong perfor health perfor healthy performance of the, our retail portfolio, where we saw uh, important, good, uh, healthy uh, evolution. Uh, as you see on the cost of risk is increasing to 1.5% from 0.3% uh, in Q4 versus Q3. Uh, the reason behind that as we entered in the, the cold period, let's say in the winter, uh, and looking on the uh, on our portfolio on the legal entity side, we built some uh, some buffer to ensure that we are well covered in case of. So far, it's performing uh, it's performing well. And if we look on the NPL coverage ratio, is a healthy 180 percent plus 24 percent on quarterly basis and minus 17 percent. I mean, it was even higher at the beginning of the or end of the year before. Um, if you go on the next slide. Uh, and all these uh, kind of uh, healthy uh, performance, and again, the challenge which we are facing on uh, compressing net interest margins, uh, still uh, it's a highly liquid uh, bank with a LCR of 326%, uh, increasing both on quarterly and on yearly basics. Uh, capital adequacy ratio is 24.2%, while uh, minimum is 16.5%. Entire one is 22.4%. Again, well capitalized, uh, capital driven by the strong performance on the net income side, but also uh, lower distribution of the uh, capital in form of dividends or other, any other forms. And that's it. No okay, thank you. Thank you, Makar. Thank you, Georgi. Um, we now have a chance uh, for questions. Uh, you can either type in the chat or you can raise your hand and uh, we will open the mic. Um, there's a question over email. Um, so um, is there any updates on the IPO? Uh, no specific update at this stage. IPO remains the target uh, for the bank. Uh, and we need the changes for uh, in the law, which uh, will make the IPO uh, practical. Um, as soon as we have the update, clearly we will let the market know. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, everyone. Thanks for uh, um, watching our quarterly update um, and hopefully see you next quarter.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye.